on this edition of Driving Growth, The Banyan Tree Story. I'm Allison Eyring, CEO of Organization Solutions and Adjunct Professor at NUS Business School. Today, I'm meeting with Abid Butt, CEO of Banyan Tree Hotels and Resorts Group. In just 20 years, the Banyan Tree has grown into a leading global brand in the boutique resort and spa industry, with 36 resorts around the world and countless awards to its name. Abid, welcome. Great to be here with you. What do you think are the three main things that somebody should know about Banyan Tree? Uh, we were the, the pioneers in starting out private pool villas in Phuket. Our first resort had that feature. Now it's been obviously replicated by several other brands, which again, um, sometimes it's flattering to see that the concept has been replicated, but we were the first ones to have that uh, done. We always look for culturally rich destinations where we can create unique experiences. That's what our brands are about. Uh, so we're looking for uh, Northern Hemisphere, uh, other locations where we can celebrate the local cultures. You've been in business for 20 years. What would you say have been the significant turning points in the growth of Banyan Tree? The first resort development, which was actually our entry into hospitality industry, was in Phuket. Uh, it was an abandoned tin mine of all the places that was converted into what is now an absolute thriving resort destination. Um, when our founders, Ho Kwon Ping and Claire Chang, when they bought the land, uh, they hadn't recognized that a lot of the lagoons were actually very, very badly polluted and toxic in nature. Now unless somebody told you what it was like, and it was truly like lunar surface when we started, unless somebody told you, you wouldn't know it. Uh, some years later, we launched our sister brand, Angsana, uh, which is a younger, more energetic brand. Our core values have stayed the same since the very inception of the company and, and the sustainability that was put forth in Laguna Phuket that has stayed the same as we have expanded. You've also extended the brand to products and even non-resort hotels. Absolutely. The, the brand has had tremendous success as a resort product. That's how we started out. We've adapted some of the features of a typical resort development and put them into an urban location. For example, our uh, hotel in Macau, which is a high-rise hotel, it features relaxation pools in every single one of the rooms. Pools is what we uh, got to be known as when we started Phuket. Spas continue to be a very strong service provided in any of our hotels. And that's also um, more resort related amenity as opposed to uh, uh, urban location right. One of the things that I love about the Banyan Tree brand is that in addition to being about pampering and intimacy and relaxation, it's also a brand that's connected with being environmentally friendly and one that's been committed to the development of the communities in which you operate. Well, uh, true. I, our, our operating philosophy started out with good, sustainable practices. And it's not just about the climate our social responsibility reaches across to developing communities, equipping people from those communities with skill sets that give them earning power. So as we set up our resorts, we've tied up with EarthCheck Global. They help us implement and evaluate our developments. And several of our resorts have reached highest accreditations through EarthCheck, but it goes beyond that. Uh, for example, in our Vietnamese uh, resort, when we opened it, we have launched a restaurant in Hoi An that is primarily staffed with um, underprivileged people, underprivileged children from the community that we bring in and teach them culinary skill as well as service skills. Over the past 20 years, you have received probably now more than a thousand accolades and awards for your brand and your service. 
How do you sustain that level of uh, performance now that you have become a global brand? We have stayed true to the things that our customers have enjoyed over the years. Um, our commitment to service, our commitment to celebrating the local cultures, that has stayed true no matter where we have gone. Uh, so in Thailand, you would find a resort that is very rich in Thai elements. When you go to Vietnam, it is Vietnamese uh, culture that you would experience. And I think for the lot of travelers, they go there to learn about the culture and to experience some of that uh, culture. So one of the significant turning points for Banyan Tree would have been around 2007, 2008, when you began growth more outside of Asia. What were some of the challenges that that presented? When you're expanding to markets other than where you have operated, it, it, it sorts of take you, uh, takes you out of your comfort zone. So you have to get to know the nuances of how business is done in these other places. Um, the, the organization started in Phuket, uh, but when we started expanding to places like Seychelles or Mauritius or Mexico, all of a sudden we had to get to know uh, what was unique about those locations, how the business was conducted, and how it differed from what we had done in the past. Some places, the, the labor shortages have forced us to bring more people from our other locations. But most of the times that has been very, very successful and our, our teams have appreciated it a great right. deal. It seems that all companies as they expand globally face the challenge of retaining what's core and then becoming global. So what have been some of the ways that you've balanced that? I think our training, our leadership, uh, we have Banningtree Management Academy based out of Phuket, where we bring our colleagues from uh, all over the world each year to uh, go through sort of a boot camp, if you would, to prepare people for future leadership positions. It is important that individuals and our associates feel like they're part of a, a bigger team as opposed to just the unit that they work in. I think that has been very, very successful. But also visiting the hotel because our business is all about people. Uh, whether it is the, the people that we attract that come and stay with us or the people that take care of them. So Abed, recently I interviewed Professor Jochen Wirtz from NUS Business School about low-cost service excellence. How does Banyan Tree address that issue of managing uh, service excellence and cost? Well, first of all, our brand is about understated luxury. Even to the consumer, we're not about ostentatious luxury. We're not about opulence. But that also holds true to what goes on behind the scenes. And, and more so because we put tremendous amount of emphasis in taking care of the customers and the consumers so they really get to experience the essence of the brand. We take, try to uh, put lots of emphasis on our associates, whether it's developing them, equipping them with the skill sets that are required to take care of the, the new traveler as they come into the, the hospitality industry. Some of the, the uh, opulence that some other companies might have in having large offices uh, that is clearly not the case with us. Uh, we are very humble um, presence, even at our home office, and that would hold true in the hotels as well, uh, where the majority of the emphasis is placed in the areas that touch the consumers and the users. Let's recap some key takeaways from Banyan Tree's approach to sustainable growth. First, engage with local communities and equip them with skills that give them greater earning power. Second, when expanding into new geographies, take time to get to know what makes them unique and how they differ from existing markets. And third, sustain high levels of performance by staying true to what your customers most love, be great, and celebrate local culture. In part two of our interview, I'll ask Abid about the challenges of driving growth taking over the reins of leadership from the company founders. 